What's going on guys? White Horse here, gonna be giving you guys a, another deck profile today. Uh, so today I'm gonna be showcasing my Adventure Horus Eldridge deck. Um, <clears throat> it's not meta, <laughs> it's uh, actually a deck I threw together for fun. Uh, I built this deck for my good buddy uh, Tim. He's been playing it for a couple locals and actually uh, he got lucky and got second place one night. Um, so I built this for him. He's been playing it, you know, every now and then, but we're, we've are we been trying to figure out what he wants to play. Uh, so I threw this together. Um, it's actually done surprisingly a lot better than I expected it to. Uh, this deck doesn't really play that many hand traps, so it's not really able to keep up with the current meta. Um, but I kind of threw together uh, pretty much some uh, floodgates alongside a couple hand traps um, with the deck. I'm going to showcase it to you guys, um, but I just wanted to make this video because I've actually had this planned for a while. I'm just now finally able to do it because uh, life has been crazy with work and all. And I do apologize with the uh, random videos not on schedule. I'm trying to uh, get that back on track and get those out uh, on regular schedule for you guys. Um, but thank you guys for being patient. I am working on some more dual videos for you guys for next week. And I'm going to get those out and try to um, kind of get back in the full swing of things with this format. Uh, but anyways, I've done enough chatting. I'm going to go ahead and get into the deck profile. Um, so for the main deck, I'm going to show it off first. Oh. It's very kind of straightforward. We have, we max out on all the engine cards. Uh, we have three Enchantress, one Griffin Rider, no Illegal Knight. Tim did want to try Illegal Knight. Uh, that is something we may test, but um, for now I got this built. Uh, pretty much this and the like adventure token is really all you need to set up the negate. And then we have the three uh, Msetti, Glory of the Horus, along with Domatev, Happy, and Kebisanuif. We have these three. Uh, these are mainly like kind of like discard outlets, to be honest with you. You mainly just want to get Msetti to get King's Art. Uh, if they ash that, it's actually not terrible because that will kind of ensure your uh, adventure plays. Um, being able to set up a negate is really good in this deck because it's really your only line of interruption for your opponent, aside from like the Elledge uh, card, the trap card, the Conquistador that pops. That's like really and truly the only um, interruption you have. And then when we have two Elledge, I only main deck two. Um, I figured the third would be clogging the main. So I just main only two of those. And then for the hand traps, I only have three Ash Blossom in the main, but we do side some. So there is there is more that come in. Uh, it's just really dependent on the matchup. And that's it for the monsters actually. Um, I don't know that count, but that's all we have for that. Uh, there's a lot of spells in this deck. So we have three Rite of Aramisir, uh, three King Sarcophagus. This card is Generally, the one you want to draw. Um, if you don't draw it, then you want to M Seti away either a Elledge Trap or another Horus Monster or even an Enchantress because it's kind of free if you do that. Um, and also, like, you get the draw, so you kind of replenish your hand that way. And, uh, you know, you just this is the card you really want to try to get to because setting up the Horus Monsters is also like more effects that you have for your opponent if they do like get rid of a card while they're in your monster zone. Um, three, Cursed Ellen. This card, I don't actually own. This is my buddy's, but um, this card is so good in this deck because, like, these just become discard outlets later on for, like, this. If you need... if So, like, if they banish your cards out of your grave, your horse monsters, and you start drawing cards like this after you've already, like, established the Elledge, you can, um, you can discard it with this and uh, you just kind of like rebuild your graveyard. I found that kind of neat, something to, you know, do like late game if you're grinding. Um, three talents. I feel like this card is necessary, this format, because of all the hand traps in the game. And uh, this card just like, this card can just change a game state because like you can take your opponent's monster and like you can link it away so they lose it. Or if it's like a monster that you can overlay it into, you can overlay it into like a coach king or like a buzz king or just whatever, you know, and 
being able to like look at your opponent's hand too after they like ash him seti to see what you know like what they're playing and like you know what to um like what to set up like what inboard wise to set up so like, this card just really sweet in this deck um it gets you back in the game especially if you're losing and then the power one ofs we got one faithful venture one draco back and uh called by called by is crazy if you draw it in this deck because like if you either m seti and like they do they do activate the ash like you have the called by so you're pretty much like you don't really have to fear about anything else because you can you can set up griffin rider for the nibiru so like you don't really care about nib um the problem with this deck in the game right now is there's so many hand traps so you have to like kind of be prepared more for just like one or two because everyone's main in 15 to 18 so but uh this this cards these cards at one all have worked out um haven't needed more or less so three uh, for the traps three sanguine uh three conquistador this is just the elbows traps uh, we max out on these um because you know we want to we want to either set them from deck or we want to like be able to add them or whatever and um another cool thing that i'll show you guys so what i love about this deck with the horse with the horse engine is you can actually like act like you know banish these from grave to reset each other um and then late game if you have a happy the um horus monster on board and something leaves your field while this is in the monster zone you can target these and shuffle them back in your deck or you can add them back to your hand so you can replenish all of your recycle all of your traps so that's a cool thing and also too like if you needed to you could always uh, use these to get bodies on board so, like, your opponent don't OTK you. So, and those, that's come up a lot, actually, in this deck. Uh, especially, like, you know, one chain one, two, you know, and they don't have a way to stop this. You now, like, have a beat stick on board. Or you have Illage on board, which can be a beat stick. And then you, like, get a free pop. So, it's really sweet. Um, but, yeah, the happy thing came up, I think, once. And uh, it was pretty cool. Just being able to recycle everything again. And then for the last trap of the deck, um, I threw these in because of the format. Uh, it's summon limit. No one expects this card. And this card is cracked if you have it going first because like if you set up your Omni Negate with Griffin Rider and like you set up like two or three Horus monsters, preferably the third one being the one that you draw with because you always want to leave Happy and M Seti up. Um, you set this, you say go to your opponent, and then they, and then you just activate this after they summon the second time. And normally, um, if they don't have a main deck out game one, they lose. Like, they just lose. So, like, that's a good way to steal games. Uh, especially, like, it's also good main decking it at three because you can, uh, it's really good side out patterns for going second. So, because you don't want to open this going second, but, um... This card has put in a lot of work, so it's it's really, really sweet, really good. And I look forward to seeing, like, what this deck can do um, more at locals. This is more of a locals-level deck. It's not really, like, built for the, like, regionals or anything. So, but anyways, that's the main deck. I believe it's 40 cards. Um, now for the extra deck, we have a couple tokens. I mainly use this one for the Brave token. Um... The link monsters we have IP, Dark, Unicorn, Appaloosa, and the fifth link monster we have Avermax. This actually is supposed to be Access Code Talker. Um, it's currently in one of my other decks, and uh, Tim just applied it every time he played it. But this card, like, I mean, this extra deck is kind of flexible. You can kind of play whatever, but this this would definitely be Access Code Talker. It's very easy to go into with the horse monsters. Like, I know it sounds crazy. But you can like use them to get into this, get an effect to bounce, and then use another one to get into the access code game three and go for game that way. Um, it doesn't really come up. I think it's only came up for Tim like maybe once or it was an optional thing that he could have done, but I don't know if he did or not. So, uh, one ding gear suit. This card's crazy. I might, might have to up that to two. This card just comes in. The non targeting send is crazy. Uh, this is Coach King at two. I don't know. I don't like this card at two. We're probably cutting this to one, uh, mainly because when you make this and you use its effect and it gets imperm, you just like waste 
so much. You lose so much um, advantage. And then one zombie vampire. Uh, this card's crazy because you can uh, go first and see what your opponent's playing and also get a free body. So it's really good and you can like, you don't have to over really, you don't really have to over commit and you can like use the other two horrors monsters and leave Happy and M Seti up. So you get that send and the uh, shuffle back. So this card's like, it's really good. Plus it's a zombie. So like if you're ever zombie locked, this is an option if those cards are already on board. Um, Buzz King, this card is crazy. Uh, I think Tim actually went four game with this card once. So it's it's pretty sweet, um, and then we have the Draguglion. Uh, I can't say his name. Hope Harbinger and Numeron Dragon line. Uh, I don't know if Tim's ever went into this for game. He might have, but it's just an option. And then for higher link rating monsters, we have the um, Gustav Max. I almost couldn't read his name. And then Zeus. Uh, I mean, these are just like. If you if you ever like go into them, you just make them. Uh, I think Tim did make Zeus quite a bit, uh, like overlaying it over the zombie vampire after he uses effect and get like two bodies. If he doesn't kill him, he makes this, so he has like a board threat. Uh, but that's usually later in the game, like extending wise. And then Gustav Max is just a burn. Um, so that's the extra. And then for the side, uh, three Nibiru. I feel like you just have to play this card right now especially against fire decks. Um, but this card's sweet. And then, so this card's actually a tit, like, I don't want to say it's a tech, but it's something I wanted to include in this deck. It's Lava Golem. Two reasons. One, you like almost never normal summon in this deck. And it's really good against uh, decks that you know, like, set up like a couple Omni Negates. Like, for example, uh, Manadium. Manadium could set up like a Baron with an Apo or a Baron with like Dispatter or whatever. It can be strong. Um, it also like gets over problematic monsters like Chaos Angel and stuff like that. So this card's sweet because you can use it uh, to tribute your opponent's monsters and then drake it back it to your hand. And if you ever get a hold of a King Sark, uh, if you're gonna like, if you're planning to OTK your opponent that turn, this is a discard outlet for King Sark. Um, and it's, I mean, it's just sweet because it's like, it's almost like you break your opponent's board and then you get to send it off a King's Heart. So you get like multiple uses out of it, which is really cool. Um, and it's like, I mean, it's it's a go in second card. Like this deck kind of struggles going second and wants to go first. So like you want to have every advantage over your opponent uh, into breaking their board and just kind of like getting past your turn. Uh, because you know you want to this deck wants to grind against the opponent because it more than likely will win has a really good grind game so and then i do side the third illage so i mainly side this because uh in case we ever do go against branded or dragons they have bestials and you want to like have that edge over them or try to at least by having enough of these to summon and play with especially if they banish early or even runic runic can banish them as well um, the only way to really recycle them is with happy, but if they like stop happy, then you just kind of don't have a way to get them back in. Um, so you just have to like side this in against branded and dragons with bestials, I guess. So I wanted to like have that option. And then for the spells, just some breakers. We have, uh, lightning storm and harpies. I mean, these it's just back row clears. And then... We have some more going first cards, uh, anti-spell. This is like crazy going in uh, game three and siding this in. Because if like you have a crazy board with like an Omni Negate and you just activate this in draw phase, if they don't have Cosmic, and even if they do, you can Griffin it, um, then they just kind of lose. Like they just don't have a way to play really. And then we have uh, Rivalry and Tikaboo. So I played Tikaboo because... This is actually plays well with the horse cards because I believe they're all different types. And then Rivalry is good because you can uh, just maximize on having zombies, which can be Illich and Conquistador and Hakero. And then also, um, like, against certain decks, they just can't really, like, play because they play too many different types. So it's really good. I mean, I think Tim played 
these in a couple matches and it came up. So it's just good to like throw your opponent off with cards like this uh, because they don't, and a lot of people don't plan to see these cards anymore because they're at one. So it's not terrible, but I figured I'd throw these in because I don't think this deck can really play Gozen because uh, it's not all pure light anymore. There, uh, there's so many different attributes in this deck. So I decided to just cut Gozen out. But anyways, that's the deck profile, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please stay tuned uh, for the rest of this week and next week for more videos. I'm going to try to get those out as soon as possible. And uh, until next time, guys, this is Wild Horse signing out. Peace.